Joining me now from Baltimore, Maryland, senior editor for Conservative Review, Daniel Horowitz. Daniel, thank you for joining me. Daniel, this is really interesting. So Hispanics are, are supporting President Trump uh, greater than they did back in 2016. But I thought the mainstream media told us President Trump's a racist who hates Hispanics, despises them, calls them all criminals and, and rapists, right? You know, we were told for years after the Republicans did that autopsy report, these establishment Republicans said, you know, supporting basically sovereignty, a strong border, uh, clamping down on illegal immigration is akin to telling someone they're ugly and then asking them out to the prom. And that's not the way you're ever going to get the Hispanic vote. I've been told that way for 20 years that people like me and our presence in this movement talking about sovereignty were driving them away. Now, according to their playbook, Trump has violated every rule of how you get a Hispanic vote in their mind by pandering. But Stephanie, I think it's stronger than the way you just presented it, because it's not just that he did well among Hispanics. It's that Trump blew it out among Hispanics who live at the border. So the Rio Grande Valley in Texas, the Southeast, these are areas that have very strong cultural ties to Mexico. They cross back and forth very often. Uh, most of them have family there. A lot of them are even dual citizens. So it's an even stronger bond with Mexico than Hispanics living in other cities across America. Let's take Star County, for example, in the Southwest there. That was, I believe, one of the top five or 10 Democrat counties in the country out of over 3,000 counties. Hillary won it by about 60 points, a 60 point spread. Trump came within five points in that county. That's how strong his appeal is, because at the end of the day, they don't ba vote based on identity politics or open borders. It's a cultural thing. They want someone who identifies with them culturally. They don't like cultural Marxism. They don't like socialism. And that is the way to get their vote and the votes of most other constituencies. Yeah, and I played that video from the Young Turks. I usually don't play Young Turk video on this program. But it was interesting to see how frustrated these liberals, and especially over at the Young Turks, I think they're like to the left of the left of the left, but how frustrated they are with Biden for not courting Hispanic voters. Now, he tried, but maybe he didn't do enough pandering on the campaign trail. I mean, we did see him do a couple like weird things, like play Despacito on a cell phone at a Hispanic heritage event in Florida, which... Uh, just seemed really tasteless. I, I don't understand why you would do that. Uh, so, yeah, he didn't really try that hard for the Hispanic vote this time around. And I wonder uh, who in his campaign thought that would be a good idea. You know, it's the same thing that they do with the black vote. They think the way to appeal to African-Americans is by promoting criminals, um, as if to say that they're criminals when, in fact, they're the biggest victims of crime. It's the same thing here. Uh, by definition, if you are uh, an American of Latino descent and you're a citizen, you're registered to vote, you go out to vote, you want America, you want American values, uh, this whole thing of speaking in Spanish and having everything done in Spanish, that's not what they're looking for. Republicans that promoted this agenda for many years thought that the Hispanic vote is synonymous with the illegal alien vote. And it really isn't because a lot of them see the effects of the cartels coming across the border, particularly in the RGV there. And, you know, again, Trump supported and actually implemented the construction of a border wall in those very counties, Star, Hidalgo, Cameron, and clearly it resonated. Yeah, if you think of Latinos, especially Latinos from Mexico, for example, they try to come to the U.S. and become citizens here, and they want to live here because they want to live in a country where there's law and order. It's not that they don't love their country or where they came from or their culture or their people. They're sick of their government. They're sick of the lawlessness and the fact that they can't live in a community uh, not in fear of what's going to happen with the drug cartels. Exactly. And, and outreach to other uh, voters that maybe didn't traditionally vote Republican requires outreach, meaning you show them the, the beauty of conservatism, of American constitutional values, as opposed to just ignoring them and figuring, you know, there's no way we can get their vote. But what it doesn't mean is taking the Democrat position and just trying to somehow have a, a watered down version of that in the hopes of winning it. Remember, uh, Trump did better in these counties than even George W. Bush did as a popular Texas governor who had deep ties to Mexico and, and a lot of Latino leaders. 
So again, this is a resounding victory. I would also say what's very interesting is Trump did particularly good among Hispanics in rural areas, more so than in the cities, which one, once again shows this is not really a racial divide in America. It's more of a geographical values divide between the country class and the elites. When you talk about the border wall, and we've heard Democrats, say they would love it to be torn down. Uh, I don't know what Biden and Harris are going to do in that regards. We, I remember hearing Beto O'Rourke from Texas say, like, tear it down. I mean, like, really, we're going to take down the, the border fence that we already have. That was actually some of it was put up during the Obama administration. But, you know, never mind those facts. And people, especially Hispanics who live by the border, they don't want that taken down. Uh, again, they're for law and order. And I remember when I worked at a CBS local station by the border, I went and talked to people that live by the border, and some of them were just straight up Spanish speakers. They didn't speak any English, and they told me that they were for border security. So it's really funny, this narrative out there that um, that Hispanics living in this country just want open borders, because that's not true. You know, often I'll, I'll put out something on social media about MS-13 or uh, the Zetas cartel in Sinaloa, and of course, you know, the social media outlets will censor it, while meanwhile, people in Mexico are promoting it because they understand what these organizations are about, who they are. A lot of Americans never heard of them, and they're not familiar with it. And likewise, the American uh, Americans of Hispanic descent that are living on our side of the border, uh, often when you're in places like Brownsville, when you are in Star and Hidalgo County, you're hearing the gunfire from Metamoros. And, and, and the Gulf Cartel and the Zetas uh, intracartel battles all the time. They understand the danger of it, how close they are to the border. And look, you know, wh what do you want when you have danger? You want a wall, you want a fence, you want security that protects you from what's going on there. Yeah, sometimes you wonder, uh, you know, our media doesn't spend a lot of time talking about the crime happening in Latin America, and it's obviously a serious issue. I remember I did a man on the street for the Daily Caller a couple years ago, and I went and asked people, this is when we were talking about MS-13 for a while, and I asked people, I said, would you rather date a Trump supporter or an MS-13 gang member? Most people didn't even know what an MS-13 gang member was, and they're from El Salvador, which is just, uh, you know, pretty interesting that people just are totally unaware of what's going on. No, exactly. A, a lot of them are. But remember, a lot of the ones that did come here legally with their families over the years, they do understand, and they they came here to escape that. And, and I think the mistake that Republicans often think is that they need to echo and mimic some of the values in the countries from which they are fleeing from, but they miss the point that they came to America for a reason. And look, the way to gain any voter is to provide a bold contrast from what the left is presenting them with, make reason arguments. This is true of any demographic. But again, particularly, it's more of a divide among, I would say, socioeconomic status, geographical status than anything racial. It's the country class that's living away from big cities. They understand American values. They understand that the elites seem to control all the institutions. And they're very suspicious of it. And I think that runs the gambit of all sort of uh, races in America. Yeah. And back to my man on the street, when I asked people uh, what they thought about that, they said they'd rather date an MS-13 gang member than a Donald Trump supporter. And I actually, there's video of this. It's, it's just incredible, the answers that I got. It's pretty disappointing. And just by the way, the MS-13 gang members, their motto is rape, violate, and control. It's just terrible. Anyways, well, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your insight. Thank you so much. See you later.